All right, back with the 30-hour post-licensing course. I want to thank you guys for hanging around. We are still in the eighth lesson dealing with negotiation and counseling of your client. And we have touched on this section once before, but I want to go a little more in depth with each one of these modes because I want you to understand that there are many ways to negotiate. And it is not just one way. You actually can slip back and forth between a couple of these modes depending on what position you're coming from. Do you feel like you've got the upper hand or not? Do you understand what's really being asked of you or what your client's really asking? So let's go through each one of these modes a little bit and well, actually a little more in depth so that you understand what you're talking about. The first one I wanna talk about is this thing called the comparative or the cooperative mode, misspoke. The cooperative mode is truly the win-win type of conversation or negotiation. It is a better deal for both parties, for everyone involved. Now, the problem with the cooperative mode is it is a very time-consuming cooperation. Um, it's going to, and I can't even put a time frame on it. It could be three or four weeks. It could be a year, okay? Um, because it involves a thorough discussion between all of the parties so that they can understand how they can help the other person while helping themselves. The best deal is never really known until the discussion is almost over because it requires the input of the other person. You know, when you go into a negotiation, most people have in mind what they want to get out of it. In the cooperative mode, that is not the case because knowing what I want to get out of this does not take into consideration the other person. Well, the cooperative mode actually does take into consideration the other person. Therefore, you don't know the outcome. I mean, you may have an idea and you may have some minimal standards, but only until you start discussing it and coming up with potential answers and understanding and being open with the other side, do you really get to uh, the true answer. So that is called <clears throat> the cooperative mode. Just lost my mind there. The next one is called the competitive mode. Now, this is the one that everybody believes that all negotiations are. This is truly the win lose situation. All right because of the fact that one person actually will come out in their opinion more than the other. And their more, and I'm using finger quotes and I know you can't see it, comes at the expense of the other party. So what I mean by this is if I want to get more money for my house, it comes at the expense of the other side paying more money. Most of the time, competitive mode is typically a power-oriented struggle. One trying to get over on the other. Now, in this situation, the less your other party knows about your objectives, the better you are, and more people try and hide what they're trying to get to as their ultimate answer. They know going in what they want to get, all right? And it's go they're going to get it at the cost of the other person. The primary, or this mode's primary facet of negotiation is price. When you are only dealing in price, you are very much in the competitive mode. And therefore, most of the real estate transactions that you see between buyers and sellers is of the competitive nature. 
Now, I have been involved in negotiations with investors before where price may not necessarily be their only concern. There are terms and uh, ratios that they look to get and returns on their investment and uh, I, I don't even want to get into it because it's too hard dealing with, you know, are we going to take it and what, uh, can we do a joint venture on this deal? Can we end up with me owning the land and you owning the building? So there are a lot more negotiations with the investors. In the competitive mode, since it's a conveyance of fee simple, most of the time it's only price. And by definition, the competitive mode is a win-lose scenario. I do not want to say that every scenario is win-lose. There have been many deals that I've been involved with where there has been an offer and then the other side has come back and explained why they couldn't take that offer or what would make them take that offer. And then the, the, the original offeree or offeror has adapted their offer. So you, like I said, you can slip into the other mode. So it's not always 100% competitive. Don't get me wrong. I don't want you to believe that everybody's always win-lose. The majority of the real estate uh, transactions are going to be win-lose. Now, there is this thing called uh, the, the conceding mode. The conceding mode is only realized when there is an acceptance of the solution. Um, <clears throat> this mode is where you're trying to get to so that both parties are satisfied or accept the solution. A lot of times this is the middle ground when dealing with all of the negotiation modes that we talk to, okay? The bad thing about the conceding mode is it's not actively searching for the optimal solution. It just settles on a solution, all right? So a lot of times, when you're dealing with price, there is something that you may be willing to give up to get more money, but literally we don't get that far down the road. We kind of offer more money and then they, this, the other side takes it, all right? The good thing about the conceding mode or one of the things that is often seen as a benefit is that it's not very time consuming, all right? When someone just accepts the offer, that is not a huge uh, commitment to time. So there is really not a lot of time involved compared to some of the other modes, all right? One of the things that also does not is, it is not a power struggle typically. Um, so when one person concedes, that is not a relinquishment of power, but rather an acceptance of the offer. The, if, you, if it was a power struggle, they would come back with a counter and keep negotiating. So once they have reached the conceding mode, it is really not much of a power struggle. Uh, the acceptance mode. The acceptance mode is very cooperative. It's also very unassertive. Typically, the acceptance mode is viewed as giving in on an issue. Now, the acceptance mode is very used a lot when there, when whatever is being negotiated has uh, way less concern for one side than the other, all right? So what I mean by that is if someone says, hey, I wanna close on Friday rather than next week, and one party's like, well, the house is vacant, I don't really care, uh, it's not an issue is what you always hear. Well, it's not an issue with me, okay? They have entered into acceptance mode because it has not the priority for that one side that it may with the other. So that is the acceptance mode. Then you have this thing called the retreating mode. This is actually is a mode in and of itself. And this is typically when people see the negotiations break down and the other side of the table literally walks away and it is seen as a form of retreat. And they can often retreat through the method of just withdrawal from the negotiation. They can push out the, the day that they're gonna make a decision. They can just avoid the issue altogether. 
This is the mode that we really don't want to get into when one party tries to exert more power than the other is comfortable with they usually end up in the retreating mode. And what I mean by that is uh, imagine, if you will, a house that's listed for 100,000 and someone offers 10, that is trying to exert a lot of economic pressure on the other side or exert power by saying, oh, well, I'll give you 10,000 cash close tomorrow. Um, that other side would probably enter directly into the retreating mode uh, because this is an issue that is not even consideration for them. They could just withdraw from the negotiation altogether. Now, the important thing to understand about any of these modes that we've talked about, and I told you that you could be in and out of different modes while you're in the middle of a negotiation. You may start out with a competitive mode and slip into the cooperative mode when you start hearing the other side and you start, okay, I'm going to need to help them in order to get this deal done. So you could slip into the cooperative mode. You could also be in different modes for different facets of the same contract, right? So in other words, you could be in that competitive mode in general, but get down to something about the closing date and like I, the example that I used, well, that could be in the acceptance mode for that term because it does not have the issue to you that maybe the buyer has to be out of their apartment. They have to close by the 30th. You're the seller. It's a vacant property. I'll, I'll close the 28th or the 31st or the 2nd of the next month. It is an acceptance mode. So don't believe that you have to con uh, negotiate the entire contract on one of these modes. There could be different points and each point could be different mode. Each point could go back and forth into different modes as well. Now, I would suggest, and we teach a cl uh, class here at Real University called Client Counseling 1 and Client Counseling 2, which actually has hands-on practice of negotiation techniques. Um, I would suggest if you are interested in bettering yourself in the negotiation field that you might want to think about taking a course. There is actually a course uh, for the negotiation of real estate. Um, and if you Google that, uh, there is a company that specifically teaches real estate negotiations as part of your professional package that you would uh, then offer to your client. All right, so we still got a little more to go about negotiations, so we're not done yet. We're going to keep going. Hang on, we're going to switch files.